Have you ever tried to do some vibe coding or vibe UI design, but then end up getting software bugs, lose context, inaccurate results, and the reason is because the large language model does not have a structured plan. Because whenever we try to build an application which has a high complexity, we need to find ways to break the task down into smaller tasks so that the large language model can be able to execute the task much more accurate. Luckily, we also have a MCB tool that can actually help us to break the task into a smaller task so that the coding agent or the large language model can be able to execute the task much more accurate. And that's why in this video, we're gonna talk about how we can be able to use a tool called Taskmaster, which is a MCP tool that we can be able to use for our task management system with AI-driven development. And personally, when I tried to use this, I was able to get much higher accuracy for app development with AI. Now, here's the agenda for this video. Basically, we're gonna start by set up the project and the installation for our Taskmaster MCP. Then we're gonna use Claude and Gemini Code Assist to create our product requirement documentation. And we're also gonna use Claude here as a senior software engineer, basically to generate tasks from our PRD file, analyze the complexity for the task, and also break down each task into a subtask so the coding agent can accomplish the task much more accurate. And then we're also gonna take a look at how we can be able to update our task or project plan based on what's generated by the taskmaster. And eventually we're gonna take a look at how we can be able to execute each of those tasks with a coding agent using Gemini. So pretty much you can think of Claude as their senior engineer for the development planning, whereas Gemini Code Assist is like your junior engineer basically trying to execute the task one by one as an AI coding agent, since we all know that using Claude is quite expensive and the results are very good. Now, if you found this video helpful, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribing for more content like this. So with that being said, let's get started. So now let's take a look at how we can be able to set up our Taskmaster AI inside of our local machine. And basically to do so, there's two options. One is we can be able to install this globally with a hyphen G. And the other one is to install locally within a project. So here inside of a terminal in Visual Studio Code, you can see I have created a folder called demo. And basically I'm gonna install this globally using the hyphen G here. So if we were to run this, and let's say if we encounter an error for the permission, for example, like this, what we can do is we can be able to attach sudo before the command. Here, we're just gonna enter the password. And here you can see we have successfully installed Taskmaster AI onto our local machine. All right, so now once we install Taskmaster AI, now we can be able to initialize our Taskmaster project. But before we do so, I want to make sure to set up our web application first before we run our Taskmaster init. So here you can see that's exactly what I did. I basically run this command and it will basically install a Nest.js application using the ShatCN UI library, which is gonna be our setup for the web application. And once we set up our web application for the setup, then we can be able to initialize our Taskmaster project. So this is the command that we're gonna use, Taskmaster init. And then here you can see it basically prompt up with some questions. And here we're just gonna say yes to those questions and configurations. And then once we have successfully initialized our projects, this is what it looks like in a terminal. And if we were to open our folders, you can see that this is what it looks like. So we have our environment variables, which is showing here for setting the large language model providers, right? So you can see that this one is gonna be required for using the Anthropic API key. And now here we also have a folder created for Taskmaster. And inside of this folder, you can see that we have our templates folder. And inside of this, we have our PRD. So this is gonna be our product requirement doc. And basically we need this PRD to have the Taskmaster to understand what the product or project we're trying to build so that it can be able to list out all the tasks based on this project. And basically you can see that inside of this PRD file, we have our core features. We can be able to list out the user experience, the architecture and so on. So let's take a look at how we can be able to specify that inside of our PRD. All right, so now to create our PRD file, basically what we need to do is to specify or brainstorm some things that we need to put in the PRD file. And to do so, I basically use Gemini Code Assist to help us to brainstorm. And here's the prompt that I'm going to provide to Gemini Code Assist. And basically the goal is to build an application that downloads the transcript, the description, the comments from a YouTube video and save them into a structured JSON file. The Gemini Code Assist to act as an engineer manager and help us to plan the implementations and align the core features and identify the main technical challenges and here we're just going to send this request to Gemini and let's see what it generates. All right so here you can see it basically create us a project plan. So basically the goal is to do the YouTube data extractor using an SJS. So once we satisfy with the project outlines or the brainstorms that the Gemini Code Assist has provided then now what we can do is we can be able to let Gemini Code Assist to create a PRD file based on the example PRD text file. So here you can see I basically provide the prompt to help me format the core MVP features requirements we have discussed into the project requirement doc, please use the structure and the styles from the attached example PRD text file. And here we're just gonna add that as a context. So here's gonna be at the example PRD text file as a reference for the final output. So here we're just gonna send this request. It's going to read through this text file right here for the formats. 
And based on the brainstorm that we have discussed, it's going to create a PRD text file or doc file based on the requirements that we specified. Okay, so let's try to generate this and see what's going on. All right, so now you can see that it has created the PRD file for our YouTube data extractor application. And this is gonna be where we're going to set the file. And here you can see it's going to set the file inside of the docs folder, right? Inside of docs folder, there is a PRD text file. Uh, so here you can see to write the file, we're just going to allow the write file in this chat and it's going to write a file inside of docs. So inside of docs, you can see that this is our PRD file. And here you can see we have our core features, user experience, technical architecture. And here inside of the technical architecture, the final output will be a JSON format with the following. So we have our title, descriptions, transcripts, comments, and such, which is exactly what we're looking for for this simple application. Awesome. So now once we use Gemini Code Assist to create this file, now what we can do is we can be able to parse our PRD and generate a initial tasks using this MCP. And just to show you what it looks like, so basically if we were to parse this PRD file, it's going to analyze the PRD documentation, break down implementation steps. And then after that, we're going to run the task master list and it will basically generate a table for us to see all the tasks related for this project. Now, before we run this, we also wanna make sure to set up our Anthropic and Perplexity API key. So in that case, we're just gonna to go to the Anthropic landing page and click on API and click on console login. And here, we're just gonna sign in with Anthropic. Okay, and then here, we're just gonna set up the account. And then here, what we can do is we can be able to get the API key in the console. So we're just gonna click on this. And then here, we're just gonna create our first API key with Anthropic. Once we get the key, we're just going to make sure to set it here. But before we do so, I also wanna make sure to remove the examples so that we can just have the .env file here. And we're just gonna change the API key for the Anthropic. All right, so I have already changed that in my .env file, and now it's time for us to also get our Perplexity API key. So to do so, we're just gonna sign in with Perplexity, and here we're just gonna continue with free. Okay, so once we set up the API group, we also have to buy some credits to use our Perplexity API. So pretty much we can just click on buy more credits here, and simply we can just put in like $3, for example, and it's gonna purchase. Okay, so now you can see that we have $3 remaining for the credit balance. So now we can just click on the API keys here and we're just gonna create an API key. Once we have our API key, we, we wanna make sure to set that inside of the .env file instead of the .env example file. All right, so now it's time for us to parse our PRD file and be able to generate the tasks. So in that case, I basically create a new terminal and here you can see I'm just going to paste this command start with the task master and parse PRD. And this is gonna be the location where the PRD file located. So it's inside the task master slash docs slash PRD text file. So here in that case, we're just gonna run this command and let's see what the result look like. All right, so now you can see that it has successfully generated 10 tasks based on our PRD file. So here you can see that the task will be stored inside of the task master slash task slash the task.json. So if we were to open this, you can see that these are the list of tasks for this project. So you can see we have our title, we have our descriptions, details, uh, testing strategy, and so on. And each of those tasks has a status and also their subtask if there's any. And if we were to come back to terminal, you can see that we can also be able to view the task in the terminal as well. We can also be able to run this command right here to break down a task into a subtasks. And there's also a telemetry here which we can be able to see how much tokens has consumed and which model has been used for generating this result. Okay, so once we have our task generated based on the PRD file, what's also really cool about this MCP is that it can also be able to analyze the complexity for each task. So for example, we can also be able to run this command right here, task master analyze complexity. It's gonna use Cloud to evaluate the implementation difficulties for each task. And it's gonna generate report like this, uh, where we can be able to analyze the complexity for each task. So here, if we were to run this, I'm just gonna open a new terminal just to keep it separate. And here you can see, we're just gonna run task master analyze complexity. All right. So now you can see the task complexity analysis has complete and the report has written to this location, which is in the reports task complexity reports. And inside of this, you can see that we have the uh, complexity analysis for each task. And there's also a score given for each of those tasks. So it's gonna be out of 10 and complexity score for the first one is four. Second one is a five. And then we also have implement the API route. Uh, integrates the video metadata extractions. And then for each of those tasks, uh, we also have the recommended subtasks. So basically for each of those big tasks right here, uh, we can be able to break it down into four subtasks. For example, first we break down the Nest.js project setup by first initialize the project and install the dependencies. And then it's gonna create the directory structures, the configuration file, and then it's gonna set up the environment variables and API keys 
Then we're going to configure the TypeScript and verify the project setup. And what's really cool about this is that we can actually be able to take this expansion prompt to be able to break this task into a small tasks. And to do so, we can be able to use the taskmaster expand command and be able to specify the ID for the task and be able to specify the prompt to break the task into a further smaller task. So here, we're just going to copy this command, open a terminal, and I'm just going to open a new terminal here just to keep it separate. Here, we're just going to say taskmaster expand and here the ID for the task is number two. So we're going to expand the task two. And here is the prompt for what we want to expand here. Uh, so it's going to be divide the UI component creation into th these subtasks. So design, implement, and add form validations, also add testing and accessibilities. So we're just gonna copy this. This is gonna be our expansion prompt. And here we're just gonna specify the number of tasks we want to break it down. So we're gonna break it down into, let's see, four subtasks. So we're gonna say four. And now here we're also gonna specify the prompt. So the prompt here is gonna be what we copied from the task complexity analysis. So now if I were to run this, and it should be able to break this task into a smaller subtasks. So you can see that it's generating four subtasks, which is what we mentioned here. And then the task ID is number two. And then here you can see it has successfully break the task into smaller subtasks. And now if I were to look at the tasks.json, and here you can see for task ID two, you can see that these are the subtasks, right? So for each subtask, we have a title, we have descriptions, we have details and a status. And then here you can see I have also gone ahead and basically do the same for task four, okay? So here you can see that the ID is four, the subtask is four, and here's the prompt. And here you can see this is the consumption, okay? So you can see we have break task into uh, four subtasks for task four. So we can see that in the task.json and inside of here, you can see we have these subtasks for task four. All right, so once we satisfy with all the tasks that we have broken down, now it's time for us to talk about how we can be able to also update the task. Because here currently inside of our web app, you can see that we have already created, but here for the first task is to set up the Next.js project structure, which in this case is gonna be redundant because we already have that. And to do so, we can update multiple tasks or a specific task. But because all the tasks were dependent on task one, so that's why we're gonna change all the tasks based on task one. So in that case, we want to update all the tasks based on a specific task ID, which is ID one, okay? So in that case, we're just gonna come back to terminal, open a new one, and here we're just gonna paste the prompt and the command. And basically, we're going to update these critical changes that the web app has already created with Next.js and Chat CN UI, and also replace the task one with the new task to install the core dependencies for uh, basically the YouTube core and the YouTube uh, APIs, right? And also set up the mock data as well as the .env file for the uh, API keys and such. Okay, and most importantly, I want to rename the projects, right, from the YouTube data extractors web app, and also ensure that UI tasks leverage the existing chassis and toolkits. So let's run this and see what's going to happen. All right, so now you can see that it has update all the tasks uh, all together with the task.json. And here you can see it start with install the core dependency instead of the set of the project. And then for task two, you can see that we basically create the basic UI. And here are the list of implementations or the subtasks. But you can see that basically that's how we can be able to update the tasks, right? But obviously, I'm just trying to demonstrate how the update feature works. But ideally, it would be better if you have to uh, basically provide the context when you initially create your PRD file. So you can be able to mention that, hey, this is my web application, right, that we created inside of this folder. And I want you to write a PRD file based on the projects that I have created initially. All right, so the next step is basically to execute each of those tasks one by one. And basically that's exactly what I did. And here you can see this is the finished product of what the app looked like after we execute each of those steps. So let me show you a demonstration on how this app works. So let's say if we were to take one of the video that I made, for example, like this one, and we're just gonna copy this link and we're just gonna paste it here to download the data. Uh, you can see that it's gonna process data extract successfully and I can be able to click on this to view it. And here you can see this is basically just mock data. We have our title, description, transcript, and comments, right? But in this case, let's also enable the YouTube API so that we can be able to make real API calls and get real data here. Uh, what we can do is come back to the application and basically I can be able to close this or collapse this. And here we're just gonna find the .env.local and we can just uh, paste the YouTube API key here. And here for use the mock data, we're just gonna set it to false, okay? All right, so to basically get our uh, YouTube API key, basically what we can do is to go to our Google Cloud Console. And then here, we're just gonna either create a new project or select a project 
And once we select the project, we're going to search for YouTube Data API v3. And once we select that, we're just gonna click on enable. But you can see that here currently, um, I have my YouTube Data API v3 enabled. So what we can do then is we can be able to click on manage and create the credentials from there. All right, so now it's time for us to test it. And here you can see we're going to download the data again. And this time we're going to get a real time data from YouTube. These are all the comments made from this video. And you can see that these are the author, the comments. So let me show you how it actually works behind the scene, right? How I execute each of those tasks and get to this stage. So the way how I do this is I will select the task one, for example, right? So I will basically execute this task by task. You can also do this uh, subtask by subtask. Basically, let's say if I want to uh, select the task one, right? I will select the, this entire object. And here you can see uh, we select this, we can be able to add this to a chat context. Once we add this to a chat context, for example, we can also add the web app. In this case, the web app is the Nest.js application, also added to the context as well which you can see that we have already have that. I'm just gonna remove this because we already have this line selected. But basically what we can do then is we can be able to give a prompt like this, where I want you to follow the instruction, which is provided in the tasks.json to make the modification on web app. And here we can be able to say that, uh, we can be able to say at web app, and this knows exactly where to look, right? Where to make the modification. It's very specific. And here you can see that's exactly what I did. And these are all the things that Gemini did to execute the task. So you can see that it writes the file, it runs the shell commands. And also if we were to scroll down, you can see that it also have access to the Taskmaster AI MCP server. It can also be able to set the task status. So here you can see the task status for task one is done. Also along with the subtask is also set as done, which you can see here. Okay, and we basically do that for each task. And after each task is done, I will verify the changes and I can be able to then move on to the next task, which here you can see, I will basically do the same for the next task. Basically select task two, give the same prompt and it will basically start execute. And at the end, you can see that it will mark the task two, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, all of those tasks as done. So we'll be able to update the status. So that's basically how I execute those tasks. And as a result, it will give us a much more higher accuracy in terms of the task completion. So that's pretty much it for this video. And if you do found value in this video, please make sure to like this video and consider subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.